we are talking of economy and we are talking of the economic activities. When we are talking of these two things, that means we need a regulatory body to organize these economic activities. And thus, the organization of economic activities is done through certain types of kinds of economies in the world. And let us study in detail about these economies. The first of its kind that we are talking is the centrally planned economy. The centrally planned economy is also termed as socialist economy. In this kind of economy, the first feature is that it is the state ownership, meaning the government organizes, holds, has everything in its own hand. So, the government has the ownership over all the resources that we have is the, is the first feature of the socialist or the centrally planned economy. The second feature is that planning plays an important factor in the centrally planned economy. Now here the planning is done in such a way that everybody gets good share or equal share that is the motive behind such an economy remains this that the government plans to use its resources for the best allocation and distribution of its resources. Then social welfare. Social welfare always remains the most important part in the centrally planned economy. For example, in other economies or as such in simple terms too, not many people would be interested in spending money wherein they would not get better returns. So, whether it is setting up primary health centers or organizing such schools like which from where we do not make profits is the most important function undertaken by the centrally planned economy and thus social welfare remains the most important function or characteristic feature of the planned economy. The next thing is that in such an economy because the resources are distributed equally because everybody is getting nearly an equal share of the profits which is made and the government remains the owner of everything. So, the inequalities are less compared to other economies of the world. As far as the merits are concerned of such an economy, we have to remember that it is a balanced economy wherein the people are getting the best of the resources that they have. Besides, there is no situation as employer and employee. Everybody is the employee of one employer and that is the government. So, nobody is big or small, rich or poor, no inequalities as such, which means there is equitable distribution. Whatever is the profit is distributed amongst all the people working in that organization, which means everybody has one thing in mind that we have to work collectively towards making more money. Now, the interest also of the government is one and that is social welfare. Thus, the people are benefited from all angles. We hardly see any class struggle in such kind of economies because people do not tend to become very rich or very poor in this kind of economy as the distribution, allocation of resources remain in the hand of the government and is distributed equally amongst the people. 